Hello fellow viewers and electronic enthusiasts. So today I've got quite an interesting video for you guys. We're going to be looking at series and parallel battery connections as well as how to build your own universal battery charger for any, any battery system under 24 volts. Although this method I'm using can be adapted to larger battery systems, we're only going to be doing a small battery system for today. So stay tuned to find out more. Let's start first by looking at what is the difference between a parallel and a series connection in batteries. So this is going to be quite important later on, so just bear with me. So when we have, when we have a look at the paper that I have here in front of me, this is quite a nice uh, little chart to show you the difference between series and parallel connections. And I'm going to be demonstrating in, on live batteries, which I have here, um, just how it actually works. So when you connect something in series, you're actually connecting the negative to the positive side, creating a common um, link between the two batteries. As you can see here, we have two 6 volt batteries and now we've coupled them in series. So your you have your negative side of the battery, your positive side of your first battery gets connected to the negative side of your second battery over here. As you can see, it's been linked by one wire. And then you have a positive on this side of the battery is going to go to your positive. Now what happens here is if we have, for instance, you can see here a 225 amp hour 6 volt battery. When they are coupled in series, remember the amp hour stays the same but the voltage increases, they get plussed together. So um, let's have a look here quickly at some calculations. If we have a 3.2 volt battery and we have connected another one with it in series, you're actually just going to be plussing the voltages to each other and that is going to give you 6.4 volts. Okay, so now that we do understand the basic principle of series connection, let's move on to parallel. So as you can see here in a parallel connection, your positives are both connected to each other and your negatives are both connected to each other. You can add more batteries as you go along um, where you can just add all of the negatives up to each other and all the positives. In a connection like this, your voltage is going to remain the same um, but your amp hour is going to increase. So let's take the same um, battery system I've used here. Let's say for instance it, it, it's these batteries. So they are rated at 6 amp hour. Now when we do a parallel connection we're gonna, not going to plus the voltage, instead we're going to plus the amp hours to each other. So now if you have two uh, batteries coupled in parallel you have 3.2 volts still but amp hour of 12 amp hour because the 6 plus 6 amp hour is going to give you a 12 amp hour 3.2 volt battery. Hence with in on the um, series connection over here you're going to see that your voltage is going to increase but your amp hour is going to remain the same. So let's say for instance we have a 6 amp hour pack here and we add two 6 amp hour packs together, we're still going to have 6 amp hours um, of battery capacity, but with an increased voltage. Now that we've learned how to connect batteries in series and parallel, let's see how this actually works in practice. So, um, we have two Life Pro 4 6 amp hour batteries here. So as you can see, this is side is your positive side and this side is your negative side. Same with this, side, this one, positive over here and negative over here. So now we're going to be doing, a, before we do a series connection, let's actually just test the battery voltage here. So I have it set to auto here and let's just have a look quickly on the voltage side. So as you can see here, let's we're going to be at 3.271 volts on this battery and on this battery you're going to be at 3.282 volts. So 
If we connect these in series, we should see a sum of the voltage of this battery um, and the voltage of this battery. So if you plus these two voltages to each other, you're going to get what you're going to get in a series connection. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. They just screw into each other. And there we go. Now we have a series connection with these batteries where positive and negative, where your negative goes to your other batteries positive and this is your new positive and negative terminal. So let's have a look at what the difference is in voltage now. There we go, 6.54 volts. So as you can see in a practical example, you can now add batteries to each other in smart ways to have bigger um, voltages or bigger capacities. Okay, so let's just go and unscrew these two and that's... Okay, so let's say for instance, you have a battery. Um, let's take this 3.2 volt battery and it's full, its nominal voltage as stated on the battery is 3.2 volts. You're not going to be charging your battery to the nominal voltage. Same with lithium ions. Lithium ions is 3.7 volts and LiPo batteries are also at 3.7 volts. So these are only the nominal voltages, which is going to be the best voltage for your battery to be stored in. But if we want to be adding, using it to the full extent and using the full capacity on it, each battery comes with specs and I have prepared some specs for you. So when we have a look here, you can see the capacity versus the voltage of LiPo cells. Now LiPo is the same, has the same voltages as lithium ion cells. So when we have a look here, at one cell, we're going to be charging it to 4.2 volts to get 100% capacity. And same if you have two cells, meaning two cells in series, then you're going to be charging it to 8.4 volts to get reach 100% capacity again. And so on and so forth. Each time you add a cell in series, the voltage increases. So the voltage increases which you charge the battery at. So let's have a look here. So these, this is for... Um, uh, lead acid batteries you can check down in the description below I've added all of these images there so you can just have go have a look for yourself and then here is our LiPo 4 cells so at 100% charging as you can see here we are looking at around 3.65 volts per cell that we've added so meaning when we go back to our um, equations that we've done. Let me just grab the paper here. So meaning each of these battery cells requires 3.65 volts to be 100% charged. Okay, so what does this mean? If we add two of these cells in series, like we've done before, then the, the new voltage at 100% charge is going to be 3 0.65 volts times 2 and that is going to be equal to uh, 7.3 volts 3 volts so this is now our new charging voltage if there are two cells connected in series and so on and so forth so let's have a look at crack uh, in the practical world where we're going to be charging cells based on this series or parallel connections. Now, let's actually get to the fun part where we are going to be building our own uh, charger for any battery system that you can imagine under 24 volts. So you can charge anything from lithium ions, LiPo batteries, uh, LiPo 4 batteries, and lead acid batteries, depending on what battery you have for your application. Only thing that's going to be different here is your amperage and your voltage settings. So let's have a look at a project and what I've got going on here. I have pre-built the project, but I'm going to be get, taking you step by step through all of the processes, what you want to look at and how are you going to improve if you need a bigger charger for your battery system. 
Great. So let's have a look at what I've got going on here. First, I've added a power supply module. This is going to convert AC electricity to DC. And do keep in mind that all of these components only operate on DC. So you're going to need a DC power supply. This more specific module that I've used only goes up to 30 volts. So 24 volts at 2.5 amps is still going to be in its range. So I would recommend going for buck converters, opposing um, boost converters for charging your batteries. Because when you buck, you actually gain current and it's much more efficient method of gaining that, getting that power than actually boosting to the voltage that you require. So always make sure your power supply is going to be a higher voltage than the battery that you're actually looking to charge and use one of these buck modules that they have available. We do have a bigger module as well, but for the um, general purpose of this battery charger I'm building, we're only going to be using the 5 amp constant current driver. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, let's add power to this so I can go step by step through the process. So, um, when you do open your plug that comes from um, your power or your, your wall power, I would recommend stripping the wires and just checking the colors. So, on the board over here, we're going to have an L, an N, and it's a weird little symbol there that's going to be Earth. There's no need to connect Earth as, as it's only for safety features, but I do recommend connecting it if you're going to be leaving this charger overnight to charge some circuits, just to add that extra protection and safety to your house so it doesn't catch fire. Um, then we're going to be looking here at the live wire. Your brown wire is going to be entering there. These are all screw terminals, so it's just easy. You just strip the wire and you just screw everything in there. And then your blue wire is going to go to your N, which is going to be neutral. Then on the other side, here at V plus and V minus, this is where you're going to be getting your DC voltage. So make sure you have your red wire on the plus and your black wire on the negative over there. Now, let's actually see what voltages we are getting here. I'm just going to turn on the tester. So firstly, do be careful because AC, this side can actually sh give you quite a shock if you accidentally touch it. So do make do be careful when measuring the voltage over there. Okay, our our meter is actually going to go red here. So we are at 219.2 volts AC. As you can see there, it tells you that this is AC, and um, this specific multimeter actually displays red when it goes into a dangerous area of operation. So 220 volt can be quite, quite dangerous, so just be really careful. Now, on our output side at our DC level here, <coughs> you can actually measure the voltage here, and it's gonna be at 23.61 volts. This is gonna be perfect for the application that we're using this for. Now, from the positive and negative of this power supply module, I've actually connected the positive and negative from the input side of my constant current driver. So you'll see there, on small, there's going to be written in plus and in minus. At in plus, you're going to go with your red wire, and in minus, you're going to go with your black wire. You can solder them to the sides here, or you can just use these screw terminals provided there to actually just connect your um, power supply there if you don't want to do any soldering. I do prefer soldering as it is more sturdy and as you can see there, there's no way these connections are coming loose. Now, on the output side here, so it's going to be an out minus and an out plus. On the out minus, go for your black wire and on the out positive, you'll see a weird board that I've added here. Now, this is actually just a feedback protection diode board I've had. Um, I, don't, I didn't have any uh, 10 amp diodes, so what I've used here is a few, a lot of 1 amp diodes all connected in parallel. So please do make sure that the white line of the diodes, you'll see on the one side there's no line, and on the other side there's like this white circle. 
make sure that that white circle is pointing towards your red wire over here. That's going to be very important. If you do uh, switch it around, then there's going to be no current flowing to your battery, meaning you can't charge. So this is going to provide a voltage drop for us, which means that the battery's voltage and the buck module's voltage are not going to be chasing each other. And if you don't add these protection diodes, you do run the risk of overcharging your battery pack. Now, let's have a look at this board. Um, so over here, what this actually does is it takes the power in and it converts it to you for you to a lower voltage. Now, let's have a look at what I've got here. I haven't actually um, done anything to this board, so this is standard out of the shop just like this. So let's see what voltage we're getting here. Okay, we're getting 22 volts. So it looks like it is bucking, but not enough for our application. So for the general purpose of this, we're going to be charging this battery over here. Um, it's nominal voltage at 3.2 volts, but as can be seen in the graphs provided below, you want to be charging it at 3.65 volts. So when we do measure it here, I'm just going to take one of our new products. It's a nice, neat little screwdriver set. So I'm just going to be taking the smallest flat screwdriver and I'm just going to be turning the left knob. So you'll see if you do turn it counterclockwise, it's actually going to be decreasing the voltage over there. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a voltage of around uh, 3.65 volts. So just let's just get close to that voltage range. So it might take a few turns as the adjustments are very fine tuned. But once we get there, now I've set it to roughly 3.65 volts. You can fine tune it to be exactly what you're looking for. There we go. There shouldn't be any problem. So the other thing that we do have to look for is at this negative, this output, we're actually testing 3.65 volts. But when we go to our terminals over here, let's just add these two. Now we're actually testing 3.4 volts. So why is this? Because diodes always has a voltage drop of around 0.6 volts. And this can't be seen really well unless you start drawing current. So what I would recommend you do is just take your uh, voltage that you're charging with and just add um, some volts to it so it's uh, roughly 0 0.6 volts more. Let's go ahead and do that quickly. So now we're actually going to be set to around 4.2 volts. So now we have our voltage in roughly the right range. Let's just go quickly and do an amperage test. So please do keep in mind that you can only use buck modules with a constant current function included as well. So what does this mean? When you dead short the board, it's actually going to go into current limiting and it's not going to short out your board. And an additional, additionally, why we actually need this function is if we do charge a battery, with a board that only has a voltage adjustment, adjustment, it's going to draw maximum amounts of current out of that board, potentially damaging or blowing it. So that's why we really do need the second knob, which is going to be current limiting. So let's have a look at how we set that. So take your tester and take your red wire from voltage and take it to amperage. So this tester will automatically switch over to amps whenever I insert a wire there. Now we're going to be grabbing the red one, adding it to your red here, and we're actually going to be creating a dead short on this side. So let's go to this here. So as you can see here, we're actually drawing 2.5 uh, amps of current. So let's say for instance, a battery with a maximum amount of charging current. 
So this one is actually 2.5, um, 2.4 amp hour. So this can only be charged with a maximum current of 2.4 amps. So let's actually go ahead and set that to that. So now we can just adjust the amps and fine tune it to exactly what we need. But for the general purpose of this exercise, we can only, we're only going to be charging at around 2 amps as this is more than efficient, sufficient for these batteries. So this is the maximum amount of amps that your batteries can now draw from this board. This is going to protect your board from overheating as well as protecting your batteries from um, over amperage charging. So let's just remove these terminals. Now that we've set our amps correctly, um, we can actually go ahead and implement this on our batteries. So I've just added two 20 amp alligator clips here, but you can use whatever you'd like. So for over here, we're gonna connect, be connecting the negative side to the negative and positive side to the positive. And there we go. Now, our battery, as you can see here, is actually gonna be charging. So that blue means that it's charging. We can actually go ahead and test the amount of amps that we're putting into our battery by removing the positive wire, adding one side of your test lead to positive and the other side to the battery. So let's have a look here. Okay, so this battery is quite full already, so it's drawing around 380 milliamps of current. So now, we're gonna put it on like this, and we're gonna love it and leave it until it is fully charged, and this light should go on when the battery is fully charged. So let's actually get to calculating the diode voltage drop. So, as I've said previously, it's gonna be anywhere from 0.5 up until um, 0 0.8 volts voltage drop over these diodes. So now we have actually set our voltage to a higher value at around 4.2 volts, but it's actually charging at 4.2 minus 0 0.6, which is gonna be um, 3.6 volts. So now that we have it charging, let's see what the actual voltage drop over the diodes are. So you're gonna take the one end of your connect of your tester, put it on the one side, and let me just add it here for you. And on the other side, you're gonna have the other end of your tester. So as you can see here, we actually have a 0 0.75 volt voltage drop over these um, diodes. So now let's just write that down. 0 0.75 volts voltage drop so now we're actually going to be taking the nominal charging voltage of these batteries which is going to be 3.65 volts and we're going to be adding this voltage drop to our equation so plus 0 0.75 and this is actually going to be 4.4 volts and that's the actual voltage that you're going to be needing to set your board to because of the voltage drop over the diodes. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So whenever you set the voltage of the board, don't do it while your batteries are connected as you're going to get an inaccurate reading. Remove one of the sides of the battery and then take a voltage reading over here. And we're going to be setting our voltage to this 4.4 volt that we have just calculated. Let's go over here. Let's make sure you're turning the right knob. A little bit too much. There we go. Now you're going to be left with a fully charged battery. Um, and you've taken into account the voltage drop over the diodes which means this should charge to at around uh, 3.65 volts. Okay, great. Now we're left with a charging battery. You can leave this and love this and it's gonna be charged full in just a matter of time.
Um, so let's, for the sake of the argument, let's say you want to be charging one of these batteries. This is a lithium ion battery. It's not operating at the same voltage as these batteries. As you can see here, this is a 3.7 volt nominal voltage battery. So when we have a look at the charts that I've provided, you'll see that one of these cells actually requires 4.2 volts to be fully charged. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So as you could remember, this was our calculated voltage drop over the diode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take 4.2 volts, which is the voltage we want to be charging these batteries at, and we're going to add 0.75 to that just to get our actual charging voltage that we need to set this um, by converter to. So let's have a look at this. 4.2 plus 0.75 is going to be equal to 4.95 volts. This is the actual voltage we're going to be needing to set our chuck module or our buck module to. So let's go ahead and turn the tester on again. And be taking the reading there. Oh, sorry, accidentally set. Didn't set that back to voltage. Okay, let's go ahead and measure, measure the voltage there. So as you can see, we're still at 4.392 volts. So we're gonna be needing to set that up. So just turn the left hand knob clockwise until you reach um, 4.95 volts. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, great. Now we've actually set it to 4.95 volts. We can connect it to the battery and that should charge at a maximum current of around two amps. And there you go. You see a little light go on there. That's a good sign that your board is busy charging. Um, I wouldn't recommend for this specific constant current driver, I wouldn't recommend charging anything over three amps as you're gonna require additional heat sinks and heat dissipation for the board because they do tend to get quite hot. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really do hope that you've learned a lot regarding batteries and chargers and that you'll be able to build your own charger in the future. Um, do have a look at all of our products that are linked in the description down below as all of them can be used for charging modules. And yeah, have a good one. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.